All right, class, we're coming back from Halloween weekend. And we're continuing on our spot illustration for our coloring book. So, so far we looked at sketching, how to refine the sketch, how to do things like live trace in Illustrator to get started with a vector, and how to use the blob brush, brush within Illustrator. So I have kind of two different versions that I did. <clears throat> you just need to pick how you want to get your vector line work. Open them up. And today what I want to show you to do is how we set it up for coloring, right? Because your sketch is the first thing that's due. These will be due next class on Wednesday. Your clean vector line work is the second thing that's due. And then the third thing that's due is coloring behind that clean line work. And I did some, we were having some computer issues with a, a new operating system. So I, in class, I drew some stuff on the whiteboard that's helpful to keep in mind as you're finishing your line work. It's fortuitous that we're doing a coloring book because a coloring book often has a lot in common with good line work for digital coloring. And that's that the shapes for the most part are connected. You see how the, the body of the apple here is fully connected. There's no gaps. Whereas in a more free form line art, there might be gaps. That makes it really hard for your cursor to select and makes it a little bit, a lot harder to color it because you'll have to pretty much redraw the shape in order to color it unless you keep your, your vector shapes connected. And then the three types of color we'll be learning about are flat color, flat local color, just really basic, duotone flat color, taking that local color and splitting it into lights and shadows depending on how you want to light it, but still keeping it in that flat realm where it's all reds. And then full spectrum color, where you might mix the reds with other colors like green or purple or orange to get more dimension. But all of this is digital coloring because it happens behind your clean line art. So let's look at that clean line art. These are the different approaches. This was my refined scanned ink sketch. And then using image trace in Illustrator, what's called vectorizing. I got this image, which I, I like. I like the variations in the line weight. I think it's the one I'm gonna use. But then you could also, just going over my pencil sketch, I did this with the blob brush in Illustrator, which is nice because you can set it on different smoothnesses. And yes, this is smoother, especially you can see on the helmet how smooth that curve is versus how like, kind of lumpy it is here. So it's, it's about your own preference. So I'm going to use this one. I saved them both as EPS files, which allows them to be moved from Illustrator into other programs like Photoshop. So once you have the EPS file saved of your clean line work, you can always go back and, and touch it up in Illustrator. But once you have an EPS saved, I'm just going to preview it here so you can see what an EPS looks like. Remember, it's a vector file. So Macs allow you to, to view EPS files in their preview program. And my computer is a little slow after its update to a new operating system. But vectors, remember, are perfectly clean at any size, just like the logos we did. I'm not going to wait for that. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to go to Photoshop, just like we did when we were making our vector logos print ready. And instead of opening up my EPS in Photoshop, which would force me to rasterize it, I don't want to rasterize it. I'm going to create a new file within Photoshop. You can do this in Photo P as well. So I'm going to say Photoshop new. Create a new work. And I'm going to set it to be 8 inches by 10 inches. My illustration is wider than it is tall, so I'm going to make it 8 inches by 10 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Remember, because we're bringing a vector file in, an EPS, the resolution doesn't matter for the line work. What the resolution is for is for the coloring. So now I'm just going to drop, drag and drop my EPS file in. 
and then I'm going to size it onto this eight by 10 piece of paper until it's what looks good for a print. And that's going to be a good size to do some raster coloring behind the line art. Now, while that's loading, because Photoshop's taking some time, I want to point out some resources that are here. Not only my demos and the progress of your classmates, but also you'll see my little handout here where it goes through the steps. A sketch, vector line work, flat local color, duotone hard edge color, duotone soft edge color, full spectrum color, full spectrum color with color holds. We'll talk about offsets. We'll talk about CMYK separation. We're going to learn all of this stuff about digital coloring between this project and the next project. But I also have a link to slides, which I think are actually pretty helpful because it's really good to see real world examples. So a lot of us are fans of animation. Animation is almost all digital coloring, which means it has lines. It has line art that is colored behind. So at any time, if you're wondering about the vocabulary I'm using that you are responsible for, like flat color, duotone color, hard edge, soft edge, full spectrum color, color holds, all of that's new stuff. These slides will help you understand them. The difference between flatting and local color, the process, all using real world professional examples. I use a lot of Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman has a glowing lasso and that's a great example of special effects like color holds like this. But everything has a, a real outline around it, even if it's colored over at the end. So that's what makes this digital coloring. So those slides are there for you. Let's see if Photoshop has brought it in. Excellent. So now what I'm going to do is just make it big enough so I can see it cleanly on my 8x10 and then hit return. And because I dragged and dropped the vector in, notice that this is a smart object. I'm not able to change it, erase it, alter it without rasterizing it. And I do not want to rasterize. So I'm going to undo what I just did. I want to keep it as a vector. And to keep it especially safe, I'm going to use the padlock. So this is setting up for, for digital coloring. Next, I'm going to take this background layer, which is filled with white pixels, and I'm going to rename it to blank white. Now I have a blank white, and I have my vector line art layer. I want you to think of these as two pieces of bread. In fact, I'm going to padlock the blank white layer as well. So I have a piece of white bread on the bottom, and I have a piece of black bread on the top. Nice Schwarzbrot, you know, the Fredericksburg black bread from Germany. So we have Wonder Bread and Schwarz, Schwarzbraten. Between those slices of white bread and black bread, we're going to do our color. That's the, the fillings of our sandwich. So I'm going to create a new blank layer. And this first layer is going to be what's called flat color. So what is flat local color? It's the most basic type of digital coloring. So flat because it's all one color in the entire shape. So this lemon is entirely yellow. That's flat local color. This apple is entirely red on the inside. That's flat local color. That's flat color. Local color means that it's the color that's inherent to the object, no matter the lighting condition. So here's an example with Nico. The flat local color for Nico gives him the different blues that his feathers are in those locations without any lighting. Here is the flat local color for Wonder Woman. So it's not super dramatic. And it's how basic newspaper comics were printed. So if we look at Charlie Brown, has flat local color for his skin, for his shoes, and for his shirt, right? And those never change. So flat local color for the characters. But look at the background. The background is not flat color. 
there's a lot of variation. In fact, there's even other colors besides green in that background, but the characters themselves flat local color. So it's always the first step of, of digital coloring. Okay, let's get back to Photoshop. So in this flat color layer, I need to choose how to drop in colors. And this is the process. You're gonna use your magic wand and you're gonna make sure that contiguous is checked and it has a tolerance, which is the default tolerance in Photoshop of 32. Then this is what's a little weird. You're gonna click on your black bread layer on your line art layer that's a vector that's locked. And you're just gonna use it to select something like this wing. Notice how this wing is a contained shape. So when I click inside it where I want to color with the magic wand, it's gonna select only the shapes inside the wing. There's no openings that allow it to select outside of it. Then I'm going to move to my flat local color layer and I'm gonna pick a color. I can use this color slider, this color selector right here. I'll show you some different ways we can choose color in the next video. Cause I actually like to have reference colors that I steal from. But right now I'm just gonna choose them right from Photoshop's millions of colors. Then the tool you're gonna to use, which is a new tool for us, is the paint bucket tool, which can be found under the gradient. We've used the gradient tool a bit before, but here's the paint bucket tool. And now I'm just gonna drop it in. And because my other layers are locked, it will only let me put it into the flat local color layer. If I move back to my black bread layer, I can select other areas that I want to be this color. And I can hold down shift and I can even select multiple at a time as long as they're contained shapes within my line art. So all the places his feathers show. Now I'm going to go to my flat local color. I'm going to use my magic, my, uh, my paint bucket and I'm just going to drop it in. Then hit Command D to deselect. If I turn off my line art, that's what just the flat color looks like on its own. And because each of them is separated, each of these can be easily changed to another color. Like if I decide, oh, this wing, it should get darker, I can drop that in, or the tail. But that is what's called a different kind of coloring. That would be duotone coloring. So right now I just want flat local color, like Charlie Brown shirt, the same color for each local color everywhere. So the next thing would be his beak and his feet, which are this, these are basically our campus colors. This fluorescent green. It's a tricky color to use. So I'm gonna drop it in. I can change it later if it's not right. But first I have to select it with the magic wand. I select from my black bread layer within my contained shapes. I'm gonna select the, the feet and the beak. And then I'm gonna to go to my flat local color, use the paint bucket, drop it in. And if that color seems way too bright and crazy, it kinda of is. So let me modify it. Maybe warm that up a little bit. Such a toxic green. There we go, it's a little bit better. All right, now I also want that green, I think, for the helmet. But I can't just click on the helmet in my flat color layer and expect it to fill in where I click. I have to first select it from my line art layer because we want to always keep the vector a vector. We don't want to rasterize it. And I'll fill that with the same green, but I have to change to my, my unlocked layer to do it. So now this is what my flat color layer looks like. Okay, what about the inside of his mouth? Maybe a nice pink. Something to warm it up. Use the magic wand. Select within the vector. 
just the shape it is.